Welcome back to the channel and today I'm gonna to be trying to create the infinite rocket launcher uh, Very much inspired by the infinite bomber concept that I've uh, did here a little while ago Where I timed all of the bomb bay doors so that they have a never-ending cycle of uh, Bomb dropping with no recharging in between uh, So that way you just have infinite bombs that never stop but I got a lot of comments on that video asking me to do the same thing, but with rocket launchers, and rocket launchers definitely behave a lot differently than the bombs. So I'm going to be curious how devastating of a thing we can make with the rocket launchers. So let me go ahead and respawn here. There's actually something else I got to show you. You may notice that my character looks a little bit different now. Uh, and that is because an update was actually very recently introduced to the game that brought a whole bunch of new skins and outfits and stuff. So I thought that was pretty cool and I've decided to change up my character's look. So this is what I look like now. So anyway, as far as the infinite rocket launcher concept goes, I think bombs were a lot easier to work with than the missiles are going to be because the bombs, it doesn't really matter where they are necessarily. As long as the bottom is down, you can just kind of put them all in the line and then just have them drop consecutively one after another other until the first one is all recharged and the other big difference is that the bomb bays drop four bombs at a time consecutively so that actually takes up some of the time of the recharge whereas the rocket launchers they only will launch one rocket and then there's a pretty hefty cooldown period so let's figure out what we're working with here and we'll do some testing and then once we have a functional prototype we're gonna build a plane and then wreak utter havoc on this map which, by the way, part of the update that recently uh, got introduced it has a peaceful version of the map now, which means that you can actually spawn in this map with no enemies around. So that might be actually be kind of nice to have that option. Okay, so first step to uh, figuring out the programming for an infinite rocket launcher is to determine how much time in between rockets there are. If I hold down E, two, three, four, five, is it five seconds again? Here, I need to actually get a stopwatch instead of using my brain. Believe it or not, my brain doesn't keep perfect time. Okay, ready and start. One, two, three. Okay, so it looks like this one has a four second cooldown. Now we just got to figure out how many rockets do we want to fill in that four second cooldown. And one of the things we have to consider is that the rockets pretty much, uh, they're gonna have to be side by side or vertical, which makes a lot less sense for a plane, but we can't really, I don't think we can have rockets like this. Actually, let's test this out real quick. Will this rocket destroy the one in front of it? Okay, also, why didn't the rockets fire at the same time? Okay, that time they fired at the same time. Okay, how deep can these rockets go before they, uh, they hit each other? And I'm not going to be using any glitches where things are, like, uh, welded into each other. I just tend to want to have a nice non-exploitative build. Whoa, okay. H can I rely on this, though? Like, I'm, I'm getting a little bit concerned on whether it's going to be literally hit or miss when it comes to these rockets uh, firing into, into ourselves. Okay, there we go. So now we've determined that four rock... Oh, see, that time I didn't. Hit or miss. That is a hit or miss situation here. What? Okay, we do have to consider the aiming. Once the rockets lock onto something, they could aim down through here instead of firing straight. So this might not be something we want to rely too much on. All right, so let me confirm the four second uh, timer. Just make sure if it really is four seconds, then that means each one of these should get uh, delayed by one second. And this should be equal time between all of these. Two, three, four, back to the beginning. Why does it seem like it's not equal? All right, let me let, let me let them cool down and recharge. Two, three, four. Okay, they definitely all had time to recharge. Here we go. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Why does it feel like it's a, like a tenth of a second late? I don't like that. Okay, so if we want this to feel like an infinite stream of missiles, so then let me mirror this over here. So then this I'm gonna have 0 0.5, 1.5, and then 2.5. So now I should go bump, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, there needs to be another one. All right, so now we're getting closer to filling in the gaps. Let's see how this feels. This feels really weird. 
This like you can hear it's not a consistent tempo, but they're all half a second delayed from each other, so it should be a consistent tempo. In theory, it's good enough. It's just these minor inconsistencies, which I don't think are really that important. Is this enough to be considered an infinite uh, rocket launcher though? Like, does it really feel like we have an unlimited stream of rockets right now? I feel like there needs to be a little bit more. I think we need to go to a quarter of a second in between. So here's what I'm thinking. I want to create like a V shape. And I don't know if this is confirmed completely, but I've heard that the lock on for the rockets is a 45 degree angle. So if we just go in a 45 degree angle on these rockets, then they should not be able to aim into each other. So now if I copy this and duplicate it and then turn it upside down and then make all of these the quarter of a second interval in between, we should have a really nice continuous stream of rockets. All right, so this was zero. So this is gonna go 0 0.25. This was one. So we're just gonna add 0.25 to each of these ones. And then also add 0.25 to uh, each of these ones. So this would be 0 0.75 and 3.75. So now every quarter quarter of a second, we are going to have a uh, rocket launch. All right, let's see if this thing works as intended. This is not working as intended. Hold on a second here. Maybe I didn't let them all charge up first. Let me, let's look at what's going on. Five, six, seven. Okay, two of them are firing at the same time, which is not good. This is 2.25. That is also 2.25. I think this is supposed to be 3.25. Okay, I think I fixed it. I mean, it's kind of working, right? But I mean, when we're aiming at something, it should be fine. This is a lot. This is a lot of rockets. I think quarter of a second is good enough. I am a little bit, uh, I am a little bit annoyed by the inconsistency of the sound. Even though everything is a quarter of a second off from each other, it does not sound like consistent quarter of a second intervals. But the program, that's what the programming is. So I'm just going to stick with, uh, I'm just going to stick with it. Now, what's interesting about this, I'm trying to think of how I'm going to build a plane around this. And this is kind of looking like a mouth to me, but this is very large. And let's check the aerodynamics of these uh, things. Okay, the aerodynamics of the rockets themselves are actually pretty good so let's figure out how do i build an actual plane off of this this has to be the front of the plane so we don't shoot ourselves now obviously we are going to need some aerodynamic blocks coming off of this so i'm going to go with the most aerodynamic blocks the four by one wedges so i'm just thinking this is going to be a lot of weight at the front so yeah i'm thinking there's definitely going to have to be a flap wing up here Ooh, what if i build like a hammerhead inspired thing because i'm just thinking if i try to build out around these dimensions that's just a really really big and heavy aircraft but if I try to make this hammerhead style so it actually flays out at the front here, that could be more interesting. All right, this has been an interesting design process so far. I think it's actually starting to look pretty cool. Um, I've built out to somewhat of a tail. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I'm gonna fill in the body, but I also just realized I haven't put propulsion on this thing yet. And I'm definitely gonna want a decent amount of propulsion. So I'm gonna see if I can fit these large jets in here because these jets, as far as the uh, the bang for your buck goes, like these have a, a, a tremendous amount of power. Um, but the question is, can I fit this thing on here? Cause it has to be like this. I mean, maybe in the back, like that actually doesn't look too bad in the back. I'm kind of a fan of that. The only problem with this is, um, this is gonna put a lot of weight at the back. So I am probably gonna have to move them down a little bit just to be a little bit more aligned with my center of mass. If I add some lift to the back, we should be good. I don't actually have any elevators in the back yet, so there's still room here. Okay, I filled in the body. And now we have a clear lack of wings in the front. That is going to, you know what? I'm going to go biplane design up in the front here. I'm going to put these up here. I know I should have more, but I don't want it to stick out too much. But this will at least uh, increase the amount of lift that, we're ha that we have going on up here. All right. So now you can see my center of lift is still pretty decent behind my center of mass. Um, so let me add a little bit more. Modular wing right there. Let's take this thing on a test flight. I just got to make sure all my controls are good. All right, maiden voyage. Is this thing actually going to fly? There we go. Okay, yep. So my center of mass was in front of my center of lift. And this thing definitely noses down. I think my center of thrust is also still slightly above my center of mass. Here, let's look at the forces here. Yes, yeah, the center of thrust is going just above my center of mass. 
I move these down, it's gonna look terrible, isn't it? It does not look that great. But that probably would honestly help just a little bit. Let me add these in on the middle here. They don't technically provide lift, but they might actually add some stability. All right, now with the center of thrust slightly below the center of mass, is it gonna feel any better? All right, still noses down a little bit. I'm gonna move these wing pieces up by a block because I can. That's, the, that's their last connection point right there. All right, and my last idea is I'm gonna change the interior body a little bit right here by filling this in. Instead of having these wedge pieces like this, I'm going to have these blocks like this. And uh, it's kind of hard to see right now, but here, let me see if I go inside here, you can actually see I do have wedge blocks all in the interior that are, oh, I gotta put wedge blocks right there actually. These are designed to cancel out these aerodynamic pockets on the interior of the plane. So I maintain good aerodynamics all throughout. So here, you can see if we look inside the plane here, um, it's all green arrows, so that should make us pretty aerodynamically efficient. But the whole purpose of that was so I can move these wings forward, because I really need to create a center of lift uh, more forward. All right, now where is it showing it? Okay, it's getting a lot closer. It's actually surprisingly still not matching the center of mass, but let's see how it feels now, at least. This is... Ooh! Oh, I'm still nosing down way more than I want to. Why? I mean, it still it actually flies really nice. Let's try firing. Look at this. This is just, this is actually pretty awesome. I need to give this thing some landing gear too. That actually might help. This thing actually feels pretty agile as well, considering its size. Look at this. <laughs> There's just missiles everywhere. This is awesome. Okay, I'm gonna try to come in on a landing here, even though I don't have any landing gear. I think building landing gear in this thing might be worth it. Okay, there we go. I actually do have flaps, uh, toggleable flaps that I could probably use for landing and takeoff, but I will experiment with that a little bit later. All right, for the sake of balance, I'm gonna try one little thing here, and that is to just put a weight in the back. And now it looks like they are all aligned. So let's see how this goes. I put some landing gear, as you can see, I have a little bit of, whoa, hold on. I have a little bit of a wheel sticking out of the back or a couple wheels sticking out of the back and then some wheels on the uh, wings. They are not retractable, but my uh, trajectory right now feels really good. Let's see. I mean, I don't know if do I need more thrust? I don't feel that fast, but maybe I don't need to be that fast. So now when I come in for a landing, I'm going to activate my landing flaps. You'll see on the front next to the uh, the head on the sides as soon as I press Q and three, two, one. You can see those flaps activate, and that allows me to get a lot more lift at much lower speeds. Allowing me to keep my nose up as I come in for a landing. And that looked amazing. And look at that. That back wheel just narrowly keeps my body off the ground. This is actually... I'm feeling really good about this. I think it's time to paint up and put this thing to some battle tests. It is battle ready, but not battle tested. So let's do this. All right, I have finished painting this thing up and I've had some pretty fun details in there. Uh, in the back here, in lieu of gills, I added three slash marks, which I thought most closely resembled gills out of all the decals. Uh, up on the front, I added a goo decal to the teeth and just painted it red so it kind of looks like this thing has already had some dinner. Uh, put some eyes up on the head and then on the bottom, here, I'll, if I go into build mode here, I actually have teeth on the bottom so if you're looking up from the bottom, it looks like the mouth of a hammerhead, you know, because their mouth is actually like underneath uh, the hammer, even though this is also technically looks like the mouth and I painted the rockets to look like teeth. It's not the most anatomically correct part of it. Um, I also added a shark fin to the back here because I realized I don't actually have a shark fin. It's really, it's like a tiny little detail, tiny little decal there. But I think we are all set to uh, go and start wreaking havoc on this place and see how effective this thing actually is when it comes to um, an infinite rocket vehicle. I guess I'll just activate the rockets now. I hope it doesn't slow me down too much. It's actually feeling pretty good. Um, I'm just realizing that the... <laughs> The smoke streams are kind of annoying, but look at this so far. Now, the big question that I'm going to have on my mind is, what are the chances of me shooting myself? I don't know if I built this thing in a way that I'm immune to shooting myself, or if it is possible that they could, the cannons could aim at each other. But I'm actually, I'm starting to think that I'm safe. All right, here, let's uh, get close to this guy up here. I'm, I don't even know how many rocket shots it takes to kill things like this. Aim at that one down there. That one's dead. See, this is actually like, this is really, really overpowered. 
Like, look at that. I'm just blowing things up just by flying near them, pretty much. Like, this might be one of the most overpowered creations, even more so than the bomber, because the bomber, you actually kind of have to uh, position yourself correctly and aim. But this thing, oh no. This thing, you have to be able to apply. You have to be able to control it, at least. All right, I think I fixed everything. I think it controls pretty well now. So now let's test it against uh, every type of enemy. We've really already done balloons and... Um, whoa, did I just get hit by something? Something out there? I don't know. Well, I just destroyed a whole bunch of stuff. We've already done balloons and flat cannons. Let's avoid that flak. Now, I definitely want to test it against other airplanes and the speeder. Testing it on a ground vehicle is going to be really interesting compared to the bombs. The bombs was actually super hard to do the speeder with because I the speeder kept speeding up whenever I got close to it. Oh, and speaking of other enemies, man, look at these missiles. I could accidentally hit something without even aiming at it. Um, let's try these ground bunkers as well. I think the missiles can destroy. Oh yeah, look at this. This is this is actually so easy. And then we can get this anti-air over here. Yeah, he is done. Every quarter of a second. We are just tossing out destruction. All right, get these guys. Oh boy, what's happening with my controls? Not nearly as agile as I was meaning to be. All right, well, this is interesting. Oh, I'm taking some damage. Oh, that damage actually looks kind of cool on the back there. All right, now that we've aimed at that, that should be done, right? I'm having trouble locking on this one guy, at least long enough to get a, uh, a good shot on him for some reason. All right, what about now? There we go. We just got to turn around nice and quick. All right, then how many shots is it going to take to get this thing? Oh, wow. Oh, that actually takes a quite a few shots. That's interesting. All right, this should be it. Come on. Uh oh, uh oh, this is bad. All right, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Ooh, I didn't know if I was going to be able to pull out of that one. That was actually kind of crazy. All right, now for the planes. This is where things are going to get a little bit more interesting. I'm definitely feeling the slowness as I try to go straight up. All right, there we go. Let's get a nice... Oh, all right, there we go. Well, that, he's done. All right, that's a new thing, by the way. The fact that they spin, they do a death spiral after they uh, explode. I think that was part of the latest update instead of just going straight. Now, where are the other guys? I know there's like three around here. I got one. I may have accidentally got another one without even meaning to. And he's almost gone. All right, come on. There he goes. Oh, that was actually kind of easy. And is there one more? Did I already get him? Looks like I may already get him. All right, now let's find this speeder. Oh, that's why I'm having such trouble controlling. I had accidentally pressed Q and it was giving me way more lift in the front and slowing me down a lot. Okay, yeah, my landing flaps were activated for some reason. Okay, so somewhere around here should be a speeder uh, near the spawn point in this direction. Yeah, if I just fly down this road, I'm gonna destroy so many enemies. Oh, no way, did I actually, these things can really aim and I haven't destroyed myself at all, even on those sharp, um, aiming angles. So that's really encouraging. All right, but where is the speeder? Oh, there he is. I just found him. Okay, here, let's do a loop around here. Here we go. So I have never destroyed a speeder with um, missiles before. So I don't know how resilient he's going to be, but here we go. Oh, look at him speed up. Look at him speed up. He is a speeder after all. All right, I'm going to engage my landing flaps for this kind of trajectory here. So I need to go a little bit slower. But it is harder to nose down. Oh, boy. It is harder to aim my nose down with the landing flaps up. Come on. There we go. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Okay, I can I can do a mid-air repair. There we go. This is actually kind of hard. It's kind of hard to drive slow enough. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. There's some real damage. Oh, we got this. He's almost dead. He's almost dead. One more hit. Oh, he did a sharp turn here. I forgot about that sharp turn. Look at that. One more hit. We just got to lock on, and is that it? What? Oh, those missed. Okay. All right. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. And that is it. Speeder has been down. I'm leaving those chirpos behind. Oh, you know what? This area right here, this is a great area to test out infinite missiles because there's just tons of balloons all lined up for you. Okay. Here we go. How many balloons am I actually going to hit? Oh, the problem is that it stays aiming at one until it gets destroyed. But I gotta be honest, we destroyed everything but two of them. So I said that's a pretty good pass. Let's see how fast we can utterly destroy Pirate's Peak here. We are gonna have to take out the bunkers first though. I forgot about these. Danger level extreme. They're talking about me. They're talking about me there. 
The infinite rocket hammerhead is danger level extreme. All right, no, aim at that thing. Aim at that thing. There you go. No problem. I'm just destroying everything. I'm not even, I don't even have to really pay that much attention, to be honest. I just gotta casually, just gotta go for a nice scenic drive. Just make sure I take in all the views, which will then be destroyed. Oh, look at these planes. These planes, they're gonna get the jump on me. Nope. All right, there we go. And is that it? Looks like, uh, looks like the mothership is exposed. So definitely just gonna head up here and aim for these things. All right, there we go. There's that one. There's that one. There's that one. Uh, looks like there's just a couple more left. I just gotta turn around real quick. Oh boy, I'm getting shot at. Don't worry. Why is it saying mere projectiles won't do any good? These are not mere projectiles. These are actual rockets and the mothership is destroyed. That took like what, 15, 30 seconds? All right, so now all that's left is to come in for a nice landing and I think I see a nice runway right here for me, just waiting for me. I'm smoking a little bit. Don't worry, I'll be fine. Okay, I need to lose some altitude real quick so I can lose some speed. The only thing is I don't have any air brakes. Okay, let's activate my landing flaps. All right, and come on in. Look at that. That felt great. That felt actually pretty great. And look at that, we actually stopped. I'm impressed with this thing. All right, that is the hammerhead with infinite missile teeth. You guys asked for it and now you got it. Let me know if you guys enjoyed that build and uh, what, you got, what you guys would like to see next in future Trailmakers videos. Let me know down in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, you'll enjoy some more that you can find right here on the end screen. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman and I'll see you next time. Bye.